let's let's slim up. Let's let's. I told her, <laughs> this may sound super real, but I can't remember the exact thing I said. But brown couple summer. Like, Ooh! Yo, let's have a brown couple <laughs> summer. You know, brown couple <laughs> summer. You know, let let's let's get it popular. Let's go. She's like, I'm all in. So, brown couple summer. That's then, a song right yeah, there. Yeah, right there. <laughs> That's a song right there. Yeah. Right, guys we are here for another episode of dmsk's the future yes. of and coming back listen there, there's not that many people that i want to talk to and it's nav and navin said we want to do this more regularly coming yeah. on and i think it makes sense because um you know we have the same passions around the creator economy and be a top shot and you know whatever else is happening in social media and and, and pop culture so yep. It's great to just chop up, and we should definitely do this more regularly. Dude, I think I forced your hand on this. Yeah, I To know. make you book in the calendar schedule. Last one was two weeks ago. I was told, Sean, every two weeks, let's connect. Let's make content. That's how we build it up. That's why we're here. That's You know, it's amazing. And, and I, unfortunately, what we need to do is we need to do a better job at taking the clips and then putting it up there on TikTok, on TikTok and 100%. whatnot else. Yeah. Because, you know... Some people might have time to watch the, the full thing of this. Yeah. And by the way, I got lots of comments of like, you got to do more of this, Navin, you guys. Oh, you. Dope. I, but the clips, people are going to watch the clips and that's what's really going to grow. That's, that's going to drive it. You know, you you are, you know, on that note, because you're such a prolific content creator, <laughs> what are what is some of your advice? Like snapshot, one minute, if somebody took a TikTok of this, what is your advice on growing like a podcast or a content channel? Yeah, I think you said it. First of all, I'm not prolific, but I appreciate you always gas me. But I think you just hit it on the head. You have to put out content in multiple ways, in multiple formats across all platforms. You have to want to get everyone's attention no matter where they are. Link, Don't sleep on LinkedIn, Twitter, TikTok, Instagram, all the platforms you're on. Even Snapchat is killing right now for any creators out there. Post on Snapchat and hope that something can hit. But I feel like the issue is like people will make the podcast. Even I have this sometimes because there's so much content happening. But like you said, we don't always get enough clips out of our episodes, even though we had like maybe 20 clips last time. Yeah. But we didn't, none of us had the opportunity to do it. So I think that's where the missed, co the missed opportunity is. Is like, yo, make your content, cut it up into 10, at least 10 clips, throw it out there. Schedule it out, see what hits, see what people like, adjust your hashtags and go from there. Yeah, well, it's wild because you, I think you were talking to Sandy about this and like she is, like she is she's on so... She is so prolific, and, <laughs> but she's also prolific and she's creating like really high quality, sort of interesting, entertaining yes. content. And I think that's that's the piece, too, is that you want to be the problem is, is you can't pump out as much content and also be entertaining at the same time. But she can do that. That's crazy. She mastered dancing with music and giving out business tips on TikTok. Yeah. No, it's, she, it's a great. And I know there's other people that do it, but I think you've, if you've seen her, she kills it. Yeah. And that's what. She told, I think she wrote a blog post the other day, like in March of last year, she didn't have anything. No personal brand, no nothing. Yeah. Now she's TikTok famous. She just launched small business tips online and she's getting people to pay her monthly to build her business. If you think about the one year turnaround, that's it's, wild. That's amazing. Just from content. And, 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 and th so th that's such an inspiring story. And, and, um, you know, I think she's built an amazing brand for herself and she's yeah. done a great job at doing that. Um, I'm going to ask you, um, some hot topics here. You know, Zion came out with this shoe today. Yes. And um, I want to get your opinion because, you know, I know in, in the lab you guys are always dropping your shoes and you probably – did you guys try to sign Zion? That's what everybody in, in the lab wants to know. <laughs> I love that you're the one who wants to know. Um, we've tried to sign – we've tried to bring on many NBA athletes and we're not there yet to where we can make them happy and the relationship could be so mutual. Um, I would love to have someone like Zion. Um, he's a game changer. He's like – they said in an article today he's the most – He's one of the most relatable NBA players in the world. Why? And that's going to fuel his success. He's young. He is who he is. He's not hiding anything. You see him laugh all the time. Even in the Jordan commercial today, it's just like, he's just this kid. Yeah. And you can almost like see yourself in him. Like, yo, this is how I want to enjoy basketball and hoops. Yeah. Going back to the shoe, I want to get it in hand to see what it's like. Totally. And I'm interested to see like what the performance guys and everyone's saying, but it's just going to be interesting to see like how he builds out his legacy, basically. Yeah. So, so going back to the shoe play, you guys at in the lab have tried to to sign a a a baller, and do you think that's going to make a monumental impact in terms of the business? It's going to take you to you know you have this, and we like right before jumping on this on this pod, you know, I was saying like the amount of fans that you're like true fans yeah. that are in the Discord that are loving what you guys do. Um, 
you know, will that be a game changer or are you just continually going to build your community one by one by one by one? I think it's a tricky situation that we're in right now where we're actually building our community, like I said, so that we're always leveraging. Does it make sense to add another influencer or another NBA player or WNBA, any type of basketball athlete to our roster? And how much will that help? Because like we've talked about this before on the flip side is we could go get NBA athlete tomorrow potentially and they may come on and take some equity or whatever. But do they have an audience of fans that are going to come to us and want to be like, oh, that's so cool. He joined. Let me come into the lab. And are our fans going to reciprocate that back to him? Because as you know, in the NBA world, even if we think someone's good or we like someone, doesn't mean the next guy is going to like them or the next fan is going to be like, oh, I'm so happy for in the lab bringing them on. You know, are you surprised that there are not more NBA stars or upcoming NBA stars that have um, created their own brands off the get-go? Like, obviously, the Ball brothers did – did that and i'm not <laughs> familiar with how how they have BDB. Yeah, yeah like I, I don't know how well they're doing yeah but i i think that's a smart play right and we this is whole this whole it comes back to the creator economy you owning your audience and at the end of the day owning your own i mean you don't need a retailer anymore you can create a shoe and go d to c yeah so how come more how come more athletes are not doing this so spencer dinwiddie is a good case of someone who's doing that created his own shoe got his own merch apparel and all that kind of stuff I think if you look at it like someone like Zion, Kyrie, all these big names, like, yeah, we can go create our own brand or we can sign a $100 million deal and have nothing to do with that, but also still piggyback off them. And like a Damian Lillard, well, I still get my shoe, I still get my clothing, but I have to worry about nothing else in the back. Yeah, end. And I, I, just I can see that. So I, th I think that's actually the main thing. But going back to the original question is I want to see that more. That's what we're trying to get to is like, how can we get a young athlete, an NBA guy who either is coming to the draft next year or just signed, who has no deals, who knows in the lab because they grew up watching him, and be like, oh man, like instead of joining with a Nike and Adidas and helping build already a billion dollar brand, could I come in and help these guys build the next one? Yeah. So that's where we're, we're trying to position ourselves to pitch to these guys and be like, hey, you're already building everyone else's dreams. But you do know? you think Zion made a mistake in signing a hundred million dollar deal with Jordan um, when he could have gone? And basically partnered with an, uh, a company yep. that's on the come up. He gets like maybe 50% equity in that. And now he gets a piece of the company, not only um, the shoe. Yeah, I think that's a really good question. I think it comes back to the whole idea of security and what he gets long term out of it. I would love to just say the answer is that he was wrong and he should. They sh these young guys should be looking for opportunities to build their own thing and partner with whether it's us or some other type of brand. But is that the right thing in their head to their business manager, to their agents? Not right now at all. Yeah. I can guarantee you that he has so many voices in his head. That's why it's not working. Well, I mean, if, yeah, I mean, and, and, and yeah, you're going back to it. Zion probably doesn't want to worry, worry about that too, because he's yeah. a, you know, he's a once in a lifetime generational exactly. superstar. I don't know if he wants to like uh, worry about, you know, creating a shoe. He's like in the design room, yeah. like creating his own shoe. And, you know, there's, you know, starting a business takes a lot of time. But, you know, I, I, that's why I say partnering with somebody, getting the equity. And I think that's what, um, you know, Jordan, I think Jordan set the, he, he, he certainly enlightened everybody yeah. to the fact that, oh, we, I can build a billion dollar brand off somebody else. Yeah. But I think the next generation of superstars is like, I can build a, billion dollar brand with nothing you know just behind it just me yeah and somebody like a zion i think ultimately could have been a billion dollar player you know even coming into the league by owning his own i do um, agree yeah. yeah you know there's some people that have so much brand loyalty they have they're so impactful um and i've been fascinated by this uh concept of drake putting out an NFT like mm -hmm. of his album. Right. And, you know, only, I don't know what it would look like, but I just think that somebody like Drake and his NFT, I know mm -hmm. The Weeknd put out his and The King's Leon and a whole bunch of stuff, yeah. people, but I just think that if Drake put out an NFT, like j just his album, you can own it, you're a co-producer, maybe a song is named after you, Kanungo, like it's the Kanungo song. Um, that would be dope. <laughs> Like that, what would that go for? What would a Drake NFT Dude, album go for? That would be astronomical in price. And the way, if, what you just said, if you could be a co-producer, just have your name on the album or a song named after you. I don't know if you can put a price on that. 
because that's going to go millions. I, I, I think for sure that's millions. To say no, I, I think it's like a, at least like a twenty-five million dollar play. <sighs> like if you're a big, if you're a big VC, <laughs> or you're a, you're a, you're like a newly minted CEO of a company that just went IPO, yeah. and you got a ton of, ton of fucking, you know, uh, <laughs> dollars in your bank, and you're a billionaire, and you're like, you know what? It's going to cost me, yeah. it's going to cost me ten mil to get a song by Drake. Uh, I'm going to do it. Yeah. And I don't know. It. Maybe. Yeah. I, I wonder how much Tyler Hero uh, thought it was beneficial to have Jack Harlow do a song of him. Of him yeah. And I think actually it was big. If you look at NBA Top Shot, Tyler Hero was Started kind of him. like the um, the poster boy at the beginning of NBA Top Shot, which I thought was actually kind of interesting yep. that they used him as the gateway because yep. – He's young, cool, modern. I thought Can it was. Relate. I thought it's great branding. Yeah. No, I, t- I totally agree. Before I forget, I wanted to say something about NFTs. Did you see Damian Lillard drop his NFT? I saw that he. I I didn't. I didn't. Di- so was it a collection? So it was. It was different tiers, different collections, right. Digital sneakers, all that kind of stuff. And I may be wrong at the time of filming this, but when I had last checked, no bids on anything. So just very interesting to see, interesting. like, when someone who goes that all out and drops all this stuff, partners with a big company. And didn't conceptualize or sell anything. So it's interesting to see like where the NFT market is going still. And I know people were complaining that, oh, there's another NBA guy coming for the cash grab. So I think people maybe saw that side of it. Yeah, right. But I still thought what he did was like super dope. And we'd have a chance to check it out. So I'm let's, let's go bid on it. What do you mean? Yeah. Like, let's go bid <laughs> I'm on it. I'm on actually a, down. On a day. I think it's like 0.01 ETH for some of it, which is like nothing. Yeah. So we could throw a bid on there and... And yeah, no, I, I'd love to. I'd love to own a piece of Dame. Well, <laughs> listen, I, I'm more of a Steph guy, but um, he's been killing recently. Oh man, Steph has been has been uh, Dude, on fire. He's on you know, I, I sent this tweet out a couple days ago, and the reason why I love Steph Curry so much is Steph Curry obviously is the greatest shooter. I mean, you don't even have to say it, greatest shooter of all time. Greatest but shooter. also the un, the most unselfish leader of all time. Mm-hmm. So somebody to take a back seat and say, "Hey, KD, come in and be the man." Um, that takes a lot of courage yep. and a lot of gumption and just a lot of vulnerability to do. I agree. Um, you know, he's changed the game. He's revolutionized the game. Revolutionized it. He, he looks like, you know, my, my neighbor. Like, he doesn't look like an <laughs> NBA player. And um, he's just a nice guy. He's a good, <laughs> honest, nice guy. He's a good dude. Yeah. And to me, that package just makes him – to me, he is – to me, he is going – he's my favorite player of all, of all time. Oh and I think God. to me, he's like, he's, to me, he's the GOAT. To me, Ooh. Steph is the GOAT. I like that. Because he changed how the game was played. He and did. LeBron is the best player to ever play. But did he change the, how the game was played? That's, that, that's my, my Steph thing. made kids want to shoot long threes, hit those crazy floaters. It's like Splash Brothers. They created that movement, him and Clay. And I think you're right. Like A lot of people, if you ask right now who the GOAT is, they would say Steph because they grew up. No, I don't think anybody would say that. I think everybody would no, say I think LeBron I think, uh, MJ. Yeah, yeah. People are going to say LeBron because he's out there. Like, oh, the debates are all about him. But ha- there hasn't been many conversations about could Steph enter that one day. Not that I'm, I'm not – don't – I'm not saying that wow. he is the GOAT. Don't say that. I'm just saying there's kids out there yeah. who are going to look to Steph and be like, yeah, he's my GOAT. Yeah, because you – know? well, to me and, – and because my brand is around disruption. Yeah. To me, it's, it's somebody like coming into a space and fundamentally changing the status quo. That's what disruption is all about. Yes. And to me, that's what Steph Curry did. He disrupted the game of basketball. He yeah. changed how the game was played. Yeah. And now it's the new standard. And to see what he's done over the last 12 games has been uh, nothing short of remarkable, right? He literally is, and I think uh, Magic Johnson had a tweet, like he should be the MVP because he's the number one, two, and <laughs> yeah. three option, which is the case. I mean, like after Steph, the drop-off is very uh, steep. You know, you have Wiggins and, and, and Draymond and, and you know, big. Wiseman's hurt. Yeah. So. Steph has just been balling out of control, and I just love it. I love it, man. I'm I'm so obsessed with it. He's he's one of my favorite. He, I think a lot of people. He may not be in the goal conversation, but when you say who's your favorite player to watch or players to watch, he's always up there. Yeah. Like for me, it's like him and Kyrie, right? All and Kyrie's another guy who just kills on the court. When you watch him, it's like poetry. But when I envision myself like as a hooper, who I want to be, you almost like want to be like Steph, because exactly. that's what you said. He's a stand-up human being. He doesn't look like anyone. Doesn't look like a hooper at all. Great heart, great guy, uh, family man, but he goes out there and kills you yeah. on the court. That's what you want to be. What, what, why do you think, and, 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 and tying this back to the shoe piece, I'm not sure if Steph's shoe has been, um, because he's been with Under Armour, it hasn't yeah. been as iconic as other other shoes. Um, in fact, who has the leading shoe in the NBA right now? 
other than Michael Jordan? That's actually like a really good question. And I wonder if Adidas leads that or if Nike, one of the Nike models leads that. Like a PG. Kyrie's probably up there because it's, Kyrie, it's, yeah. it's a low cost. I might be a Kyrie actually. Right. Because of the low cost and how dope the colorways are. That's actually like a interesting thing because I know Steph's, we've seen the Steph memes from the past where he released the hospital shoe. And that was a big viral thing with his Under Armour shoe. But I know he has killed it with sales. But I think it's been more silent. And I think that there are his loyal fans that are buying those shoes. But personally, I would never, I've never liked that shoe model, and yeah. I've never like rocked it on court to where like, oh, I love this. Right. And I think that comes back, that comes down to the whole Under Armour thing. Like, I was always interested why he signed with Under Armour. I know it was like a big deal. There may have been some equity involved or whatever the f- final details were. Is that right? I I think so. Don't quote me on anything like that. But I think he got a very good deal for him to turn around the turn down the big guys and go build with Under Armour, who didn't. Who to this day hasn't really put out? If you can name an Under Armour shoe, let me know. I can't. So you know what I'm saying? Like they haven't really killed it. Like they signed Dennis Smith and they signed all these guys, but who's carrying them? It's just, it's just so, Steph. So yeah, it, it is really interesting to see. You have an iconic generational, uh, you know, well liked player like Curry. Yep. But pr- his sales of his shoe aren't astronomical. You brought up Dame Littler, who is one of the most revered, uh, you know, players in the league too. Yeah. Drops an NFT, but can't can't sell his NFT. Yeah, I, I actually saw the same thing with like some of the KD. So KD um, started his media company. Yeah, and, and 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 for some reason, I'm not sure if like that connection was there, mm-hmm. where 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 that like. I just thought that the media company would be bigger than it would because KD would be able to bring his fans. Right. So I guess the question is, do we really truly know who our true fans are? Or do we really know how powerful an individual is and how much affinity they have? Um, Because it seems to me like it. most people are – are flaky like most fans are flaky like i love steph yeah i don't have a steph shoe so when do you actually when are you a fan to actually get you know getting a piece of somebody that to me that is i think this is where the nft abridges right. the gap is right. that because you can actually now truly know who is a super fan or not 100 percent. i think it's so hard to quantify super fans even for us and you just asked me this question too it's like i know where the number could be but if I were to put them all in the room, would some of them maybe walk out the door? Probably. Or would they not buy it? Probably. And that's the same thing with the loyalties. It's like, there's so much happening. There's so many players, so many brands. Like, it's actually hard for the consumer, even for me and you, to, like, yeah. stay loyal to just one thing. Like, you want to flip-flop. You want to try out other things. So, it's, But I think that goes back to the whole community building thing. Where it's like someone like Katie, like, let's say he, he has his investment fund. He has his media company. But is he connecting with fans in like a good way is he building that i don't think he's cultivating that type of community okay so can can we chat about community because i think you know you're an anomaly because i think what you guys have done with in the lab is actually build true community yeah but a lot of people throw around the word community and that means they have like a lit like instagram page which to me attention does not actually equal community that's not community um community is when um, I don't know how to d- define community, but I would say community is when you have not only a relationship from creator to fan, but you actually have fan to fan uh, engagement. The whole circle. Exactly. It has to come full circle. And I think that's where people are missing. That's where the disconnect is happening with a lot of brands. And that's why when you've seen us do the Discord thing is like, this is like the secret sauce of like, we, we built a Discord, 4,000 plus people. And every Saturday or twice a week or lo- product launches, we go live. And now we have this full circle of like the fans are interacting on what they want to see us create. Me and Dev and Marcellus and all of our guys are communicating with them. We bring them on stage. They ask us questions live in real time. And like those are, that's how you know like who the super fans are. They're willing to show up, engage in conversation, tell you this product sucks, try this product. So last week when we ran this and our fans gave us better ideas than we could conceptualize in our mind. And it just makes you think like there's so many, not missed opportunities, but there's so much happening in the background that I think the fans want to participate in and be a part of. Yeah. So now for in the lab, for us opening that door and saying like, Hey, you're, you're basically like a shareholder 
just just walk through the door come sit with us and you tell us ex anything you want from business decisions to new apparel to the our gym we have our we ran it we're going to run a contest where our fans are going to design our court for our new gym that we're hopefully going to have soon wow so now we're saying whoever designs the best gym boom first class take it come out you're going to see us unveil the court with everyone wow so like, you know I me mean? like stuff like that i feel like brands aren't people aren't thinking about they're not thinking about how to make a deeper connection with the audience and i've always been big on that since joining the lab is like me and dev are just two people and our team is just a couple other people but we're nothing without the people who buy our stuff Absolutely. and who, who engage with dev every single day and who follow us so i'm like the last three years i've tried to think about how can we bring them together not just through events but through facetimes and zoom calls and trainings and all these things that put us at the forefront of their mind every single day. Yeah. You know, no. And, and that's amazing how you've built true community. And, and I try to think to myself, like, because I hear the word community thrown a lot. And I believe that there are um, tons of communities that are rabid. And I would say if you have a subreddit group or you have a Facebook group yeah, so or you have a discord group <laughs> uh, dedicated to you, yeah. that means you have community yeah. or within your category. Right. Yeah. So, um, to me, that's like the definition of somebody that actually has true community where you have people actually engaging. They're not just following and liking and commenting. Exactly. Um, and so it's to me, it's it, it's kind of interesting how you guys have built the community and basically happened through um, the I, I think part of the reason why you have community. Correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah. Is not only because of Dev and the attention is because of the lab. It's because of you know the 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 training and the basketball component yeah. to it it's it's a lot it, it it started as a lot more than product it actually started with education exactly. and training it was always value first yeah gary value value sell so we've always been doing that and even going back to like the whole discord thing is like if you come into our discord like you talk about fan to fan interaction yeah what i wanted to do was build a community inside where me and dev didn't have to show up every day even though i go every day to say what up or whatever I wanted them to interact with each other. So if you hop in our Discord, you have guys asking questions like, how do I fix my jumper with this? Here's the video of it. How do I get better at this drill? How do I do that? What's your favorite anime? And all these different chats are just going off. Right. And they're becoming friends globally, which is like the whole point of, that's what I say when you throw around community, there's so many different ways you can do it. But if you come and look at what we're doing, that's actually community. Yeah. Because now you have friends connecting it. La yesterday um when we did last week japan india um indonesia europe a bunch of people it was like 3 a.m for them but they still joined our 10 a.m live stream that's community that's amazing you know what i mean they're like amazing. hey we stayed up because we wanted to talk with you guys and like that's like what this is all about and we're honestly just at the brink like this the base stage of it and hopefully a year from now we can have this conversation and maybe there'll be a thousand people every time and they're watching us and going live with us and that's when it's gonna be like, okay now we're cultivating this community yeah. of loyal fans well you know i think you guys are taking a piece of what like um you know phase clan or you know some of those guys are doing right yep. which they have you know to me like they have unbelievable community it's crazy phase um you know i'd say crypt like anybody in the crypto crypto yep. space they have aw awesome community obviously the sneaker heads go they have like great community yeah um yeah, like even like um, I, I just did a keynote for the Canadian Health Food Association or the organic and natural product space. Oh, my God. Like amazing community. Even like yeah, Costco. Like go to, go to go to like a uh, my, my wife is uh, she's like on a Costco Facebook man. Costco Facebook really? is the most lit place on the planet. Oh, yeah. You put something in there and the the, the moms are just it's just nuts. Um, Costco Facebook. That's a new one. There you go, man. Okay. So, so <laughs> listen. Last time we chatted a couple of weeks ago, we, we we chatted about NFTs and its connection with the creator economy. Have you been meditating a little bit more on the space? Have you been thinking a little bit more about what's exciting you in the space? Um, yeah, let's get your thoughts. Yeah, there there's been lots. Um, I've been putting my like I said the rabbit hole. I've been putting my head. I've been putting my best foot forward in terms of putting myself out there in terms of people building on flow and different protocols and trying to put myself out there to join different projects. So wow. I've had the opportunity to have phone calls with people building really cool NFT projects. On for, flow? On flow for artists, influencers, uh, whatever you could think of. And for me personally, it's like, I've been trying to find how I can bring my expertise in terms of management and operations to someone who doesn't have that and potentially have an opportunity to be a part of something on that flow in crypto blockchain. Cause like 
I went down the rabbit hole of trying to understand what it would take for me to maybe build my own team and build it. And it's pretty wild. You know, and you have to have someone who's a te- uh, like a CTO, a head technical who understands how to build on flow, all the SDKs and all like the little contracts and how those things work. So I'm excited because there's, there's thousands of people. I'm in the flow discord. So there's thousands of people trying to build projects. Yeah. And obviously a lot of them aren't going to hit, but every now and then I pop my head in there and I see something that's like super interesting and I'm like, this may have legs. So I reach out and I try to have a conversation to nice. see how can we help and be a part of it. So anyways, long story short, I'm super excited for like what's coming in the NFT world and, and, and in the lab, we'll do some things with coins and NFTs as well, similar to what you've done. But I want to be a part of something that's actually building separately from that on that on the flow blockchain and it has legs five, 10, 15 years from now. Wow. So I'm looking for like a unicorn who has the best idea. And there's been a couple that have come out that are, do you want to, uh, you want to reveal them? Uh, I don't want to reveal them because I, I don't knock on what I want to say something where I, that I don't join them. Yeah. Right. That, that looks bad, but I hope in a few weeks from now I can come back and say like, yo, this is the project that I'm joining to help on. And this is the concept behind it. Yeah. Um, that's what I'm excited for. There's just well, so much happening. Yeah, there's so much happening. And even like Dapper Labs, who <laughs> created Dude. Flow, they're now worth like seven five seven point <sighs> five billion Val, which is L- nuts. Let me ask you this. So they raised, right? The th- I think it was three and a half or whatever. And a few weeks later, they did the seven and a half. How is that possible? Is it just because of the, of the NFT craze that they, were, you know, they, they could double in, in such a short time? Like I was trying to wrap my head around how that worked. Do you know? Well, I, I, I think what happened was they probably um, they they didn't anticipate how quickly it would grow. Right. So I, I, I would assume that that first raise to 2.5 bill was at a certain point where they were at. But but Got you. since then, like it, it was almost like it was older, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. it takes a long time to make these deals happen. Right. Yeah. So that was probably in the process. That's like right. it was probably like January that they were making that and they <laughs> yeah. announced that. Uh, and then, you know, they had to do another raise because yeah. they're like, okay, we need more dev. We need more, like, we need more people in this. And because by the way, like this, the, 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 the top shot thing is like, the, the, this is just a gateway to like, you know, Marvel and like, Dude, pat- you know, or like, uh, not Marvel, but UFC and, NFL, you know, everything. maybe, yeah, yeah, maybe even Marvel NFL or whatnot. So it makes sense, you know, to, to, to where they're at right now. I just think that it, it probably was just a timing thing. Um, but yeah, it's it's unbelievable how they've been able to grow, yeah. and a- and actually, you know, despite all the, you know, despite the fact that the market has crashed a bit, the, despite the fact that people are pissed off that they can't get a pack, I mean, you have to be able to appreciate what they have done in a very short period of time, yeah. and still be able to transact, um, you know, over a billion dollars worth of you know, uh, evaluated car or hi- highlights yeah. um, and, and still making it exciting for people. When you open a pack, it's still cool. I think it's so underappreciated and, and I get it. Cause if you're the collector and you want stuff and you can't get it, I know it hurts cause we've both been there. We both haven't got packs, but man, like the potential is so wild. So did you try to collect the last um, hollow pack? I think it was a hollow pack that came out uh, about two weeks ago, legendary slash hollow pack. No, I didn't get it. So they, I got in line. I obviously didn't get it. It was it was a thousand dollar pack. You may have. Heard oh yeah, yeah. I, I was in line for it. Okay, so you got the. Um, I got the rebound. pack. The rebound pack. Yeah. yeah so you know they're starting to implement these things where yeah. it's like the experience is being elevated. And some people aren't aware of it. Like yo, I sucked. That I didn't get that pack. I had my money ready, but the fact that I got a fourteen dollar rebound pack, it made me happy because I got something out of the drop. It's nice. You know, so like I just feel like they're doing so much. They just brought on the, that guy from the NFL who's going to do the marketing. I know they're planning a whole bunch of content. They're getting the YouTube ready to launch some series is what I'm hearing. So it's like, they're just, we're just, we're just at the beginning, man. Like I even, I think next year, I think we're still going to be at the beginning of this. Like who knows if they'll be out of beta yeah. by then. But I just feel like uh, the other day, you probably saw this too. The NBA is posting the top shop banners on the website, NBA.com. Yeah. Yeah. So they're, you know, they're, all these things are starting to come, man. It's like once there's a million people in there, once they do, I did a podcast this morning with NBA Top Shot today. This guy named Chris, this super dope guy. And he's like, you know, what are you most excited about? I'm like, look, MJ invested, drop the MJ packs. Give, give us something MJ because he's like, what's going to take Top Shot to another level? I'm like, drop MJ. Yeah. Drop something with the Chicago Bulls or Colby or Larry Bird or someone. A legendary pack. It's probably going to cost too much for any of us to afford or whatever the case may be. But I feel like that's going to drive crazy growth to the platform. 
Yeah, I mean, there's so many things that will drive. I mean, that's definitely one of them. I think it yeah. was I was listening to Roham on a podcast of him talking about the MJ piece, and yeah. uh, Jason Calacanis asked him about um, the MJ piece. Are we going to see an MJ highlight? He said no comment. But 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 I think what the interesting piece was that if they want to get an MJ highlight, yeah, let's say it's like uh, the infamous dunk on Ewing, for example. Apparently, you have to get consent oh. from everybody in that shot so if ewing's in the shot oh. you have to go and like get the rights and like so anyways it's kind of interesting inter yeah it is interesting and 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 i think the reason why the nba okay or i i think what the reason why nba top shot and what dapper labs has done is so remarkable is that obviously on the innovation side on the blo blockchain you know even from a technical standpoint it's it's unbelievable what they've yeah. been able to do but on the other side, the rights management and the IP yes. and managing all that stuff and like, yeah, who's in the shot and whatnot. Like, because they do have some old school, um, rare, yep. uh, you know, the highlights with like, probably. yeah, the running backs, yeah. like, like a Tim Duncan or whatnot. You know, the, so yeah, th that's the interesting that's piece really is that they'll have to go back and get consent from like Ewing. And does Ewing want like? He'll need a cut. He'll have to get a cut. Like Ewing, do yeah. you, can can, <laughs> can we have posterize you? Uh, and and somebody can somebody own this. <laughs> That's so interesting, man. I just assumed the MBPA had rights to everything. That changes the game a little bit because now if you're Ewing and you're a smart businessman, I want my cut of that and I want the royalties every time it's sold of a small percentage because that will be thrown around everywhere and that could reach a million dollars and he could be laughing about it. Yeah, I, which is interesting. You know, I, I've been thinking more and more about flow and NBA Top Shot and how it, it, it almost might be like a... A, a platform where you can sort of build on top of Top Shot. So think of Top Shot yeah. as even iOS, and then you can mm. build apps on top of Top Shot. So what apps would you get on top of Top Shot? So um, think about the traditional iOS. So like Eventbrite. So let's say you have a particular, um, if you have a certain number of Raptor moments, you get to unlock, you know, a, a exclusive party to, you know, uh, oh, enter into a right. into a, a offline party. Um, maybe it's a, um, you know, maybe it's. I'm, I'm trying to think about other apps. Like obviously the in-game app. So you you start like minting, yeah. or no no you you actually start minting uh, NFTs when you're at the game, um, and the, those NFTs are only available for people at the game. So like location based NFTs. I like NFTs. that idea. Yeah, I've heard that. Yeah, um, yeah man. We I mean we could banty about it, but it's like obviously the in the the flex piece is what everyone's waiting for. How do you flex? Yes. How do you flex the and just do more the NFTs? Yeah. How do you showcase the people that I own this? There's not even an app yet. Yeah. Right. Ha have you seen on Twitter the guys that are creating like the I saw that in wall. Yeah, yeah. Just, that's that's pretty cool. Again, s kudos to those guys because those guys are super smart. They sa saw the market. Capital, I think they're first to market too. But they and must they must have had some other they must have been like doing like digital art and they have to be doing something and they have to be obviously technological enough to pull it off. But if that came and you could like imagine if we could just have that here, maybe a big screen one time and it's just like, hey, just showing all our moments. Like that's kinda dope. You know, yeah, you walk yeah. into someone's house like, yo, these are all my digital art pieces I owned with NBA Top Shot. Yeah, I, cool. I wonder what the rights are for for that. Like, can I have a Luca I guess you're just buying the hardware for for you to present. Yeah, and it's just coming from Wi-Fi, kind of sh showing your showcase somehow. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. So that, that, that's, that's interesting. Uh, I'd like to see what I, I I guess what's the difference there between showing that versus like me tweeting out my highlight or an NFT or taking a screenshot of it. Yeah, I think it's a pure flex. I think it's just pure flex. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think, yeah. <laughs> I think that's what we're waiting for. I. <laughs> yeah. So to me, the where NFTs are gonna get go, and there's gonna be some version of this. Yeah. Where you basically have an Instagram. Of all your NFTs that you own, your NBA Top Shots, yes. your your digital art, your Dame Lillard exclusive, it all sits on your Instagram, and and like it will show, it's like the Instagram of NFTs. You can actually buy, you can buy sell off there. Yeah, you can sort of give an estimated uh, estimated value of how much your NFT market is worth. Worth. That's actually really so instead of showcasing yeah. how many followers you have, it's like 
estimated value of your right. NFTs. Right. Um, so yeah, that that's what I'm thinking in terms of like what, what, and, and if you think about what the future of NFTs looks like, it's, it, it, it can actually attri be um, attributed to every single piece of digital media that's ever been everything. out there, right? Yeah, everything. I think too, and I, for I forget the name of it, maybe you know, but Mark Cuban launched a whole branding a website called- La Lazy? Was it uh, Lazy, where you can like showcase your, your whole collection. Yeah. So I'm gonna, it's, it'll be interesting to see how many more platforms come out and probably steal the idea you just said are already doing it and to where we can do that. Cause I think that's actually a great idea. I would love if Instagram just did it so we can keep on one platform and it was an NFT tab, but that's not going to happen. So I think if Facebook is involved in this, I think people will just like, Oh they'll just, man, they'll just, <laughs> yeah, well, and, and, and I think that is the, going to be the question of our um, age right now. I, I saw Zuckerberg on a discord yesterday talking okay. about what I've been fucking preaching for the last two, 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 three years is that the balance of power is shifting from institutions to individuals. He literally said in that discord, the balance of power is shifting from institutions to individuals. And it is, you, you have all these platforms, the YouTubes, the Facebooks that have given people enormous attention, yeah. um, but they haven't been really able to help them monetize. And I think what NFT, NFTs are really doing is it's gonna finally allow the creator to truly monetize yeah. their fandom. I agree. And just add, I always like, like to add the fact that the fact that you can sell something and then collect royalties on every time it's sold, it helps the creator so much in terms of this whole process of creating NFTs. So I just go back to this and this is where we are right now with NFTs for context. Like it's the education side. So I'm actually watching to see what, how other people are educating. So like hundred thieves, they did a pretty good job. They dropped an NFT like two weeks ago for their new clothing collection, but they put out an entire video first. And it was a whole explainer. Yeah. Like, what the heck is NFT? Why are we doing this? What's the point? Blah, 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 this kind of stuff. So as more brands do that, it'll be great because more people are going to start being more like open to buying an NFT, creating the wallet, you know, all these little things that people aren't used to yet. And I, that's why I appreciate Gary Vee. I think two days ago, he just dropped a whole new YouTube video and he sent out all these um, emails and resources on, hey, this is how you create a MetaMask. This is how you get into crypto. And I feel like the people who are doing that kind of stuff is going to help all of the brands like ours. Yeah get into that NFT space. Because right now, like no one cares, to be honest. So I, I, I want to tell you the most interesting uh, NFT story of this week, of the weekend okay. for me. <laughs> okay, and I want to get to your, your your opinions actually on this. The Jake Paul fight. Yeah. Um, Jake yeah. Paul fight happened on Saturday night. Knocked out Bess, Ben Askren. First round, yeah. I was watching this on Twitch. I, I, I didn't want to pay for that. Thank God I didn't pay oh, for it. Oh, someone streamed it on Twitch, nice. Yeah, yeah, thank God I didn't pay for this. That I, I would, I, I would have taken my money back right away. <laughs> I'm like, I don't want to pay for this thing. It was like, a, it was, it was the most uh, chaotic. Yeah. Somebody would, like the comments were, "This is the fire fest of, uh, oh my God. of boxing." <laughs> it was like weird, and like Bieber was there. If I was Bieber, I'm like, why am I here? Yeah. <laughs> I, I, by the way, I, somebody needs to do a deep dive on Triller and like their business model. I have no idea what the hell they're there doing. There is no business model. Uh, Go ahead. It's, it's, it's <laughs> freaking crazy. So I'm watching this fight. Jake Paul legit knocks this guy out, Ben Askren. Literally right afterwards, it was like 11 o'clock. Yeah. The fight was just over. So I'm just sitting there. I, I, I just jumped on Clubhouse to see what's happening. But by the way, Clubhouse is slowly dying. I, I go on Clubhouse. Yeah. Guess who's on? Jake Paul. Uh, Jake Paul, literally right after the fight, jumps on to club. His 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 room is packed. He's trending everywhere. Like Jake Paul's on like Sports Center. He's on every Bleach right. Report, House of Highlights. Like everybody's talking about this wow. fight. Jake Paul is on Clubhouse. What is he doing? Right after the fight, he's on Clubhouse selling his NFT. His NFT collection. Genius, and yeah, by the way, genius. all sold out. Yeah, genius. and it makes so much sense. Everyone in the world at that point was talking about Jake Paul yeah. and his fight. Yeah, he said our our NFT is going to drop. Our NFT collection is going to drop tonight. I actually was like low key. I'm like, should I buy one? Because I'm not a big Jake Paul fan. But but yeah. he just had this iconic moment. I don't know if it was iconic. I mean, it, it it was a crazy moment. Yeah, and he through that event. He launches NFT, which I think actually was brilliant. And Jake Paul, low key, and Logan Paul, yeah, 
are very savvy when it comes to this whole game of N- NFTs. Extremely. With yeah. the whole Pokemon thing with Jake, uh, with Logan you Paul. Killed that. Yeah. Yeah. So it was very interesting. It, those guys, man, like, you know, people make fun of them. And I get it because they've done some interesting things and you may hate them or whatever, but you have to love them when you're someone like me or you, like a creator, an entrepreneur looking at them like, these guys are freaking masterminds, bro. They every, Anything they touch turns to gold. And on top of that, I think he made $65 million off the pay-per-view buys. Well, you, we'll have, somebody has to audit that. We'll yeah, someone has to audit that. But like, <laughs> whatever the sale is, is, like that number had to be astronomical because there was thousands of people complaining they wanted their money back. And you know, at the end of the day, 50 bucks a pop is a lot. So you don't need that many sales to get the number high. But anyways, like they're geniuses. I didn't know that he launched NFT. I heard about it. But I didn't see it. Right at dude. So I'm, that's so I'm, smart. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking in my head. Man. I'm sitting there and I'm thinking, this guy just finished this fight. Yeah. And the only thing that he's thinking in his mind back up. is to go into Clubhouse. Yeah. That's what he's thinking. Monetize further. Because man. he knows that Clubhouse wow. has a rabid NFT community. Yeah. So that's how he exactly. launched the NFT. Yeah. I'm I'm thinking these guys are thinking business all the time. All the time. You know, you, normally if you if you win a fight, you're probably thinking about I wonder what party I'm going to go to. Literally, there's thousands of people in his dressing room. He's on Clubhouse. He's he's got his earpiece on Clubhouse, launching his NFT collection. What? Game changer, man. That's all. All we can say about the Paul brothers is next level game changers. Yeah, that's I, it. I think um, what we are what people think of the Paul brothers today is exactly what people thought of the Kardashians in 2010. That they're a joke. That they're a joke. That these guys are total, like, they're the influencers. Like, they they don't have any talent. And that is what the Paul brothers are today. They are the new Kardashians. And people say the same thing. They joke around. Obviously, they've had some uh, missteps along the way. And, and, you know, there's some accusations against them. Um, But you... that, that, that's what they are. I've never heard that. And I actually think that makes a lot of sense. It's, 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 it's yeah, it's, it's a really Kardashian good. 2.0. 100%. And they're going to continue to kill and continue to build and grow because I feel like they're also just starting their journey. And who knows? He's fighting Floyd Mayweather next. Like Logan. That That's, like, I, I don't think people understand <laughs> the craziness of that. Floyd Mayweather is may be one of the greatest boxers of all time, like at least top three. 100%. Right? And 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 for him to fight Logan, a YouTuber, can we talk yeah. about this? Like, so first of all, Floyd is a, is a freaking genius. First, money Mayweather for a reason. Agreed. But integrating himself with the influencer community, understanding how powerful they are, power move. The fact that now we're not going to go into this, whether the fight with, uh, with Jake Paul was rigged or whatever happened, but him knocking that dude out first round is going to fuel... Logan versus Floyd. It has, they're going to use that for fuel somewhere. Fueling ticket sales, marketing, whatever it is. Because I'm sure they're not going to say, like, Logan's going to say, yo, I'm, I'm about to knock you out next in the first round to Floyd. You know what I mean? So I just feel like... And by the way, I am buying the Logan Paul Floyd Mayweather fight. I feel, fight. Like, I feel like that might be, a, I, that might be So, you know, I was thinking about this on the weekend as well when it comes to boxing. And you can translate it to other sports. Because at the end of the day, sports is entertainment. Yeah. Sports competes against... You know, movies and Netflix yep. and like entertainment. That's what it is. Wrestling. That's yeah, what it is. 100%. What was interesting to me was that now you have boxing that all these fringe boxing matches, the Logans versus the the uh, Floyds and the Ben Askrens versus Jakes. I'm actually interested in watching this. And in, in a sense, and that is making more revenue than actual boxing. Way more. Right, so I, I wonder if this will translate into other arenas, right? Uh, where the creator is actually shaping the future of that industry because they have attention. Exactly, and I think that's the whole. It's just so like game changing to me, and I feel like the way the way events are going to be built out in the next few years, it's all going to be creator led. Have you seen the YouTube versus TikToker event that's coming up? It's a boxing match. And are you familiar no. with like the Ace Family, like Austin McBroom or anyone like that? Uh, or um, no. Anyways, a, imagine a bunch of big YouTubers. They're fighting a bunch of big TikTokers. And okay. I'm talking about Bryce Hall and some okay, of the big okay. TikTokers. I know those guys, yeah. And they're doing the same thing. Um, I, don't, I don't remember the cost of the ticket, but I think that's coming up this summer. And they've been promoting like their promo videos actually 
one of the best promo videos I've ever seen because the wow. way they hyped it up was really sick. But now you have like, I think 12, there's six, you know, 12 guys, six different matchups going all the way to the top. Where I think it's Austin McBroom versus Bryce Hall. Two, like, I think Austin, they have like 30 million subscribers and, you know, Bryce is big in his own respect. It's like, this is the future, man. People are seeing it as the future to only monetize, but create many media platforms and companies depending on who's running it. Wow. And that's why we're doing something yeah. extremely similar. Well, we, we should get to a fight, <laughs> I think. <laughs> so think about this. How many people will pay to watch this fight? Maybe two? Or maybe no, we I, hype I, it up I, so much that we get a million people to watch I, I, this I fight. I think a lot of people would actually. <laughs> I, 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 would watch, I would watch a friend fight. Especially because nothing have happening, I I, yeah. I would pay. I would pay too. If I know somebody that's, uh, it, I would pay. You know, like to support if, them too. I would pay. Yeah, you, yeah. I, by the way, I I I I would lose in a second. I I, 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 have, <laughs> I have no. I have I have like a I have a Bengali uh, 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 gut, so it's not gonna. <laughs> It's not going to work. You've up a lot, man. No, no, I have. I have. Uh, and by the way, I, I've been – because you, you, you you, you're you, working out a lot. Trying. What are you doing? What are, what, I'm I can not see, doing much. I can, I'm actually like – I can see your – I can see – I can oh, see – Oh, we got the shoulders for I sure. I can see the form. Yeah, yeah we got the form. I can see the form. What are you doing? When we do this in another month from now, I may come here in a tank top. Oh! We may have to go – we may have to do some push-ups or something okay, here. But it's okay. like, you know, summer's back. You know, we actually, me and Am talked about this like just two days ago. It's like, man, like – COVID came in my mind. It's gone now. Like I just wanted to be out. So it's like, we got to like, we got to fix the regimen. Um, we got to get back on the cardio. I'm happy. I'm so used to being in LA. Yeah. So in LA, it's summer year round. Me and Dev are working out every single day. Sand dunes, this, that, go to the beach, go to run, run a bicycle. In Edmonton, it's like those five, six months I lost it. So my whole thing was thrown out of whack. Yeah. But coming back to it, um, hopefully we're going to get, we haven't done our wedding, so we're gonna get have do our wedding on June 16th. So I told Am like, "Yo, let's lock in, let's lock in all of May, let's go crazy. It's summertime, we're outside, we're playing golf, we're running around. Let's let's slim up. Let's let's." I told <laughs> this may sound super real, but I can't remember the exact thing I said. But brown couple summer. Like, Ooh, <laughs> let's have a brown couple <laughs> summer. You know, <laughs> brown couple summer. <laughs> you know, let let's let's get it popular. Let's go. She's like, I'm all in. So, brown couple summer. That's then, a song right yeah, there. Yeah, right there. <laughs> That's a song right there. Maybe commission Maz or, or some local Indian or maybe Q or something like that to to write us up some lyrics. Listen, I know. Uh, <laughs> I, well, listen, I like I love that. No, I I think that makes sense. Listen, uh, COVID's done. Yeah. Uh, people getting their vaccines. Actually, I shouldn't say the variants going crazy. Uh, COVID is still here. Yeah. Um, no, but you know, people are getting the vaccines. I'm thinking June. Everyone will get their vaccines just the way that Hopefully. it's going. Yeah. And you're right, man. It's now it's time to work out. Now it's time to get serious. I I actually over the last couple of weeks I re up with my trainer because I was I like, okay, that. let me let me let me see what I can do on my own. And uh, so I and I realized I couldn't do anything. So um, the the last couple of weeks I re up I and that. now that I've trimmed the fat, uh, you know, I, I lost like 30, 35 pounds, which is, which is wild. It's yeah, like, yeah. To me, I, I, I it, it's a it's a lot. <laughs> Uh, but now I want to build some – now I'm still like a marshmallow. Like I'm still like yeah. – I'm soft. So I what I want to do, I want to – yeah, I wanna, I'd love to be in a tank. I'm, I'm – fuck it. I might come in a tank top too, baby. I think that we should plan. You know, <laughs> what, it's April. Well, let's plan by June, man. We do an episode in some in, in, in June. tank tops. June June tank top. Uh, I love it, man. I'm I'll in. bring it. I'll bring in some in-the-lab tanks. Okay. So that we can plug it up a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Boom, right there. June June tank top man June we'll, tank top we'll, bro listen <laughs> might be our most viral episode I, yet absolutely man <laughs> you know I think it's a great idea maybe we'll just do a thumbnail and that gets us some clicks I, who, yeah man hot brown guy summer <laughs> 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 it might turn into something that's trendy and we bring on some other people who knows no I I, I, I love that man I think um, I think that's great. But listen, uh, let me just do a time check here because uh, yep. you know we're having a lot of fun. Okay, so it it is uh, it is uh, yeah. it is three. So let me wrap it up. Any any last things that you want to say? Oh, this was fun, man. I, I can't wait for us to chop this up. Uh, put I, it up. I do want to throw something at you. Yeah. Um, just to hear your thoughts. Did you hear anything about what's going on in soccer? Oh man. Just um, just briefly. Did Did you hear? Like, are you? Uh, yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. Okay. I actually um, what I did was I I I called my brother immediately as soon as okay. it happened. Soccer fan. Uh, Assuming? biggest. Biggest on the there planet. Yeah. And I wanted to understand what his mindset was because at the beginning when I heard this, when I heard about the Super League, um, to me, it didn't make sense at all because when you have a Super League, 
what people don't get about sports is that sports is actually about inequality. Yeah. Sports is about creating dynasty. Sports is about um you know, creating the mismatches. The underdog. The underdog. The opportunity. Yeah. When you have all the best teams together, what do you have? Real at the, you know, are they going to be the bottom feeders yeah, in, in the like, league? Yeah. Like, you need that inequality. And I get the NFL and N- N- NBA and N- NHL are essentially super teams, but this is this is different. Yeah. This is different. And I think it's a bad move. And it looks like not only. Are the institutions, the FIFA's yeah. and the UEFA's, yeah, declining, angry yeah. Yeah. about this? The fan, I, I haven't seen one person say this is a good idea. Yeah, and just to add to that, this morning I saw, and I may be wrong, but Chelsea and Manchester City already pulled out, so they're they're out. They just backed out. So you just lost two teams. Yeah, obviously once two teams, the rest is going to crumble. I'm assuming. I just feel like from the star man, and like, they couldn't even get uh, Bayern or you know they couldn't get yeah, Germany. Yeah, they said involved. PSG and, and Bayern were on the fence, but they did, couldn't get them. So it's like, why wouldn't those guys join? You need them if you're gonna do Super League, get the Super League. Absolutely. So I feel like going back to this, like it's all about, it has soccer is about the fans, and there's so many soccer teams. This isn't we're not talking about 30 teams. There's like hundreds of teams out there. Yeah. And the fact that I think UEFA or FIFA came and said, I, I, I'm pretty sure they said this that if you're playing the Super League, you can't play in the World Cup. You can't anything. play in the World Cup. So who's going to play in the World Cup? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, am I going to have to suit up and go, go out there and play? Like, <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know what's going to happen. So I just hope it doesn't go through because I love soccer. I think it's for the fans. But it was interesting that they tried it. And even more interesting, they did it behind the scenes and tried totally. to just drop it on the world. Here's the Super League, and this is what's going to happen. I was like, dang. I think they probably anticipated more of a uh, – excitement like some welcoming right like maybe oh cool yeah like, we're all oh, we're creating the avengers of teams yeah but it looks like it was a complete backlash complete because it goes against what's what what football is all about exactly i mean or soccer is all about soccer is all about you know it's it's the it's the every man right Anyone it's can play anybody soccer. anybody can play any team you know and yep. so I think that was the big backlash. I was surprised. You know, people always complain in the NBA when you have the Lakers creating a dynasty or the Warriors creating a dynasty yeah. or, you know, like it's too unbalanced, right? You can't have these teams like they're amazing. Yeah, like but stacked. guess what? People love it. Yeah. People love it because it creates imbalance. It, create, it creates somebody that you want to hate. Yeah. And having somebody that you hate um, is actually important in sports. That's yeah. why you have the Yankees. Rivalry competition. Yeah. That, that's what fuels it. That's what makes even us as fans want to watch it because we know it's coming. And, and and the beauty of like something, you, you know, because they have, um, you know, for example, in the pre- Premier League, you can get kicked out. And then, you know, I, yeah. I think that's kind of cool. It, it prevents you from actually tanking. So to me, yeah, uh, true. Yeah, I, I don't know where they're where they're at on this, yeah. and I, I I asked my brother, I'm like, can you just give me like a whole bunch of pods that I can like deep deep dive right, on check this? It out. Because to me, it's not a um, to me, I'm not that I, I'm not a big uh, football fan, but I I do love like understanding the business and the culture of sports. Exactly. Right. Yeah. And so this was just interesting. Yeah. So we'll see what happens with it. Um, there's more things coming in my in my head, but what I love about doing these segments is. There's so much happening in the world, especially when we don't connect for two weeks. We can talk about so much different stuff. It's almost like we're doing like a bi-weekly, like, yo, what's up? This is our update on the world and what's happening with exactly, NFTs creators. Man. So I love it. And I just want to say thank you again. Thank Setup you, Setup looks even better than the Listen, first time. I, yeah, man. Yo, the, next, time, <laughs> next time you come, man, it's going to be – no, we got we got some artwork. Yeah, you it's suggested coming? in the last – yeah, it's coming. We got some artwork coming, and it's okay. going to be uh, – Can't wait. It's going to be nice. So listen, if you got this far – I, I need you to subscribe to this channel uh, for more and subscribe to sort of in the lab and all the things that Navin's involved in. We'll put the links in the bio. And uh, thanks for coming on, man. Let's keep doing it, man. I love it. Hey, guys. Thanks for watching this video. I bet the next video is going to be even better. So hit subscribe and we'll chat in the comments.